the Black Jewish Empire of Ghana. The ancient Black Empire of Ghana was established in the Western Sudan. During the colonial period, the Western Sudan was called French West Africa. The northern boundary of this region is the Sahara Desert. The western and southern border is Lake Chad, capital C H A D. Some rivers of this region are the Senegal, the Gambia, the Volta, the Benue, the Log on, log on, and last but not least is the famous Niger River. This river flows from the Guinea Highlands northeast to the famous cities of Timbuktu and Gao, capital G A O. Then it makes a sharp turn and flows southeast toward the city of Benin in Nigeria. In ancient times, the Kadha Kenyans from North Africa penetrated the Sahara Desert and the Western Sudan during the 2nd and 3rd centuries BC. When North and Eastern Africa had amassed over a million Jews, these Jews began a continuous migration to the region of the Niger River. According to the researches of Nahum Slashes, the tradition of the Jewish traders in the Sahara stretches back to biblical times. Slashes continues, and it is not at all surprising to encounter in every part of the desert traces and even survivors of a primitive Judaism which at one time played an important role in the whole region of the Sahara from Senegal to the very borders of Similar land. As I have mentioned earlier, this region that extends across the entire width of Africa below the Sahara Desert from Senegal to similar land is known as the Sudan or Black Africa. Between the second and the third centuries, the black Jews of Arabia continued migrating across the Red Sea to Ethiopia. The largest exodus of the Jews occurred during the persecution by the Arabs led by Mohammed. He had said on his dying bed that he wanted Islam to be supreme throughout all of Arabia. There was a Jewish tribe called Rechab which crossed the Red Sea and migrated to the extreme point of the western Sudan. At the same time that the Jews were migrating westward across the Sudan from Ethiopia, they also migrated southward from Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco to the fertile region between the Senegal and Niger rivers. When the Jews from the north and the east met between these two rivers, they established a confluence or crossroad in West Africa where men could exchange their culture, ideas, and merchandise. These Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 AD, and they continued with the utmost regularity for 1,200 years. Joseph J. Williams points out the course of the Jewish migration from northeastern Africa. He writes that the Jews migrated up the Nile, passing Memphis, Elephantine, Elephantine, Quartum, capital K H A R T U M, and then they turned west to Kordofan and central Sudan. In the region of the White Nile, Williams thinks some Jews settled in the country of the Shalok and the southern Sudan and Uganda. He continues by tracing the migration from Kordofan, going west to Darfur, Lake Chad, Kano, and then to the countries of the Niger River. The original habitation of the Songhai people was Gao Gia, 
Kuk Ya or Kuka. Capital K U K A. This place was situated in the Dende country and known as Dende, Dendena, lying near the Niger River on the northwestern border of what is now the modern state of Nigeria. Many scholars think that the Songhai people came from Egypt or Ethiopia because there exist many Egyptian culture complexes among them. For example, the preparation of the dead body for burial. Zael Yamina came to Kuka about 300 AD, an ancient abode of the Songhai tribe. He established a line of kings known as the Zadija or the Dia dynasty. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. His name is sometimes written Za Al Ayaman. Joseph J. Williams says that a citizen of Timbuktu named Abdurrahman S. Saadi wrote 1652 in his book Tariqa S. Sudan, History of the Sudan, that Za El Ayaman was derived from the Diza men El Yemen, which means he has come from Yemen, Za El Yemena, came to the Niger country by way of Wargla. In central Algeria, Wogla was a great trading center of the black Jews. Dr. Barth and Professor Godbey say that Zah, the founder of the first Jewish dynasty, established his capital later at Gao on the eastern upper Niger River. The Arabs, Moors, and the Sudanic writers attribute to the ancient black African Hebrews the establishment of the first empires, the erection of the first public buildings in the country, the construction of the first canals and irrigation systems, and the institution of a social economic regime which still survives in all Sahara communities. By what factors can we explain the emergence of black Hebrew hegemony and leadership over the indigenous tribes? The answer is simple. The Jews came into the western Sudan from northern and eastern Africa as a result of a chain of commercial and persecutory migrations. The Jews had settled among the most civilized people throughout the ages. They adopted new methods from other people and left their material, educational, and moral imprint among the people with whom they resided. For many centuries, the Hebrews had no employed great physical and psychological initiative. They could not afford to be complacent or apathetic. They were hated. So apathy could mean cultural stagnation or death. The Jews imported into the western part of Africa a superior material, educational, and moral culture soon after 300 A.D. And this cultural advancement was not duplicated or exceeded until the ascendancy of the Mohammedan leader Mansa Kankan -Kan, Musa of Malay, Malay, Malay in 1312 A.D. In the 3rd and 4th centuries A.D., the Africans on the west coast did not possess the cultural superiority of the Africans on the north and east coast. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the autochthonous population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. And the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, 
generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jurors, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, amorous, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturalists, etc. The black Hebrew kings of Ghana had two titles. One, Kayamaga, Master of Gold, and two, in Ghana, War Chief. Professor Godby says that 22 Hebrew kings reigned in Ghana before the Hajara in 622 AD and 44 had reigned by 790. Davidson makes mention of the Tariq El Fatak history of the researcher who said that Kumba had been the capital of the vast country of the Kayamaga while the Tariq as Sudan states that Kayamaga had been the name of the first king of this country. It is apparent that all the kings of Ghana were called by the title Kayamaga. And concerning Kumba, the ancient capital of Ghana, it was located in the southern part of the present country of Mali. During the Middle Ages, the name of Ghana was not used to designate the country. The name of this country was Aoka and Ghana was just the title of his kings. Having cognizance of this fact indicates the greatness and splendor of those kings because after the decline of the Tsar dynasty, men began to call this country after the title of his kings, which is Ghana, and I shall do the same. In the 14th century, a Muslim writer named Amin Batuta wrote about the women in one of the cities of Ghana. He found the women of Walata of surpassing beauty. And he should have known what he was talking about because he had traveled widely. Moreover, he found another fact astounding. The women were given more respect than the men, and the males did not express any resentment or jealousy. The people did not trace their descent from a paternal head but from their maternal brother. An individual bequested his legacy to his sister's sons. The material foundation of the Ghanaian state was based on the affluence of gold and iron. The use of iron in Africa, especially Ghana, revolutionized the social and military systems. El Azar Rai stated that Ghanaians fought many wars against their neighbors who did not use iron but fought with bars of ebony. The Ghanaians could destroy their enemies because they fought with lances and swords. The king's revenue agents levied taxes on imports and exports and the medium of exchange was gold. Concerning the kingdom of Ghana, Joseph William writes, whatever may be thought of, the more or less mythological traditions connected with the earliest Jews in North Africa, it is now practically an established fact that a Jewish nation, Jewish at least in faith, and perhaps too in origin, long held sway south of the Sahara.